Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Yenja, and for those of you who aren't subscribed, do that already because it does help pay my bills and make me feel good. So today I want to talk about memory palaces and I am conveniently located in front of the Royal Palace of Stockholm, one of the many palaces that we have in our monarchy. This is not a basic memory palace video. This is a memory palace video for those of you who are familiar with the concept of memory palaces and if you're not you can go watch memory games on Netflix the feature length documentary that I'm on you can watch Netflix's the mind explained that I'm on all of the links in the description down below please buy or read a book about memory because most memory books will have the memory palace technique in them so let's get to the beginner to intermediate levels of memory palaces because so many of you seem to have a little bit of a hard time understanding when to use memory palaces. Basically, the memory palace technique is that you put things along a mental path that you have predetermined and in that way because our minds are so good at understanding spatial spaces it will be easier for you to remember random objects if you've placed them along a natural journey, natural physical journey that feels natural to you. How many times can I say the word natural? That it'll be easier for you to memorize. So this was one of the hardest things I had to do for the HBO shoot. I feel like I was just supposed to explain memory palaces and for some reason it's getting a lot. Anyway, so the big question is when do you use a memory palace? Do you use it when it's for short term stuff or is it for long term stuff? The truth is it's for both. Now I have a lot of friends who are medical students or law students and they use memory palaces to learn all of the big material that they need to know. So maybe they are learning about viruses and then conveniently and then maybe they have an entire memory palace or an entire location just for viruses and they have it in a specific order that makes sense to them. A lot of you are saying that you're trying to commit things to long term memory and you're reusing the same palaces. I would not do that. I would try to have designated palaces for different things. So if I want to learn, let's say every, I want to learn every object in this area in French and I'm like, arbre, uh, palais, blah, 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 you know, then I would like to use different locations every time I learn a new language. If I use the same location when I learn German, it's gonna get confusing for me because maybe the imagery of an arbre is gonna be different than a baum and and then maybe the French word will come to me before the German word and then it gets confusing but if I have a distinct location saying this is my memory palace for French and this is my memory palace for German my head will have my head my brain will have an easier time distinguishing which location is for what and no which language I'm in, so to speak. I know some polyglots that do just one location for each language and then once they speak that language well enough that they don't need the memory palace to say, to reference back to the word tree, then they overwrite it with the new language that they're learning. But I don't think that's a great idea. Although I will admit that I haven't used a lot of memory techniques for language learning in particular. If you'd like more advice on language learning in particular, please write me in the comments down below. Some of you say that you, some people have been using memory palaces to learn grammar. I don't get that because grammar is more of a muscle memory type activity and because it's muscle memory, this is a busy, busy city with very little lockdown situation happening, y'all. Because grammar is more of a muscle memory type technique, I wouldn't suggest that you use memory palaces for grammar. What I would say is that you should use memory palaces if it's something that you need to know in a specific order. That's the number one thing that jumps out at me is if I need to know exactly which order all of the well i don't know i don't memorize that many things that are ordered anymore if i were to have to remember maybe all the world's uh, countries in order of uh, population then i would use a memory palace to know that order 
in order because <laughs> then I could go backwards and forwards naturally so if someone were to ask me what's the least densely populated country I could just start at the beginning and go backwards and then maybe I would count now there's another thing called numbered memory palaces and so you use that if you want to remember something for the medium short term and you know exactly that like my desk is number 25 so if somebody asks you what is the 25th element in the periodic ta table of elements you're just gonna immediately say ah it's this one because you know that 25 is your desk that might get a little bit complicated so let me know let me know if you have an interest in learning about numbered memory palaces but I think that's a very niche thing another thing is let's say you want to learn everything there is to know about chemistry and maybe it's not a great idea to have one room for everything you have to learn for organic chem one in college or uni i would say that it's always good to start with the broad strokes and then each room should be categorized based on the broad stroke so if it's organic chem but then there's like some specific part of it and i failed high school chemistry so i don't know why i chose this example but let's say there's a very specific part of chemistry that you know there's going to be a lot that goes into it then you start building it out in one location and because you want to reference back to that place you should not use that location for different things now if it's completely natural to you and you feel like you're never ever gonna have to look back at that memory palace then sure but i think it gets a little confusing because i think everybody thinks that we should use memory palaces for everything on earth and that's just not true for languages for example i really think it's better to just learn some base sentences that you then start using naturally and like let's say i learn in swedish like ja älskar and then i just walk around saying ja älskar det här trädet which means this tree ja älskar det här palatset which means i love that palace this palace ja älskar det här gräset i love this grass and then i just walk around saying that sentence until it feels natural enough that next time somebody talks about something that maybe i love then in my head i go you älskar John Bon Jovi, till example. I wouldn't say that you should use a memory palace for everything on earth, but you have to get used to experimenting with it and seeing, seeing when you feel like a memory palace makes sense and when it doesn't, because it's not, a memory palace isn't a, it's not a one size fits all. It's not the one technique to rule them all. It is definitely not something that I would use for everything. And I know that for movies and for documentaries and for uh, segments on TV the memory palace technique seems like it can do so much because it's the most visually stunning and most easily explained for a specific audience but you can't use it for everything in my opinion it's a little bit inefficient to use it for everything and you just have to distinguish for yourself when you want to use certain techniques so for example when would I use a memory palace technique I do use it um, for most of the memory competition discipline so i use it for words i use it for so i'm gonna switch to my phone because my battery pack just died and i've been out all day so i will not be able to record again anyway most of you don't watch this long because you don't have the attention span to watch this long i that's a bit too much shade thrown at you but i also feel like if you can't finish a 10 minute video i can't really help you with memory because I, like honestly my favorite youtube videos are like 45 minutes long and i love being focused for that long what i was saying was i use it for words i use it for remembering numbers i use it for remembering decks of cards i use it for remembering binary but i don't use it for images or names and faces there was a time when i did that and you just and playing around with going back and forth between using a memory palace for those disciplines is interesting, but I feel like at the end of the day, not using memory palace when you don't need to is more efficient. Damn, Sweden is popping. Look at that. Somebody's playing. In terms of the Charles Augustus Magnuson thing of having a vault where all of your things are and all of that i mean memory pause technique is way more fun than like a filing cabinet and it doesn't necessarily have to be that fun either so it can also just be 
very basic. I know a lot of people who have very basic imagery and if you've read Moonwalking with Einstein then there's a lot of like it should be graphic and violent and sexual but if you don't like that then it's gonna be hard for you to remember that. I hope this video has clarified some of your misconceptions about memory palaces and if you still have questions about anything memory related or anything at all, as long as it's PG-13, more about memory palaces in particular, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please like it. If you wanna see more of this, please subscribe because I'm gonna give you more of this. And yeah, see you next week. Bye.